Hi, welcome back to the next assembly video for the RepRap Prusa Mendel Iteration 2. And this will be the second part of the electronics video. So first off, what we need to do is uh, remove this clip because this isn't going to work out. And I'm just going to go ahead and clip it and uh, see if I can go ahead and remove it there. All right. Now, um, the way I'm going to I'm going to fix this is um, I'm going to try uh, just thinning out the wire a little bit. Let's use the yellow one, yellow sets here. So I'm going to pull back about half of the wires from the strand on each of the yellow wires and then just go ahead and cut them off. Now another way that you can do this is you could also connect these up top here and then and then just run down one set of wires to the plugs. Oh, and also you could uh, maybe solder these together down here and then have one line coming out and going into the plug. So there's a couple of different options. I think this is going to work out just fine. So I just twisted those together. They're a little bit long, so I'm going to trim them a little bit. Okay, that should be thin enough to fit now. Yep, that should be no problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of them. So that's yellow is done. Let's go ahead and do the red ones. So I'm just going to take half the half the wires from the strand. On, on each of the red wires here, separate them out, snip them off. Okay, and then take the uh, take the wires, the stranded wires, and twist them together. And that one looks good. All right. And of course, you only have to do this for the Z-axis motors, obviously. And the green one's next here. Okay. And then the blue ones. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, and then when you um, put these into the plug, remember it's blue, yellow, green, and then red. And uh, just make sure that none of them are touching each other. Blue, yellow, green, and red. Okay, and then when the, when this one plugs in for the Z-axis, um, it's actually backwards to all the others. So the red is going to actually be on the left. Okay, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, twist this a couple of times. All right, and on the, um, oops. Oh, okay, maybe that was a bad idea. All right, I should have twisted those. Um, one way you could make sure that these wires don't touch, and I'm sorry, I have to do it because it's driving me crazy here. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of wires sticking out at the ends of the plug here, and I just know that they're gonna, they're gonna touch and cause a, cause a short. And I definitely don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these off. You could, you could put in some like electrical tape in between them to make sure they don't touch, or um, you could use some heat shrink. I'm going to go ahead and pop these out. And run it right to the end of the plug there. This will keep them keep those wires from touching each other. Some electrical tape would have worked fine too. But that's going to make me feel a lot better about these. Okay, I recommend that you do the same. Okay, this is going to be uh, red. Green. Yellow. And blue. All right, much better. Okay, and then remember red goes on the left side. This. So on the printer board, as you can see for the X motor, 
the blue is on the left, and for the Z, the red is on the left and ends with the blue wire. So it's backwards on that one. The rest of them have the blue as the first pin. Okay, um, <clears throat> the next tricky one is the wire for the bed mount. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one next. For this one, it's kind of similar to what we just did. Um, we need to split these wires into two groups, except instead of cutting them off, we're just going to split them into two into uh, two uh, crimps. I'm going to twist them into two pairs here on each wire. And we're going to put crimps on each one of those strands, set of strands. Make sure you try to get them all in the same direction. Make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, and then with all four, like so, go ahead and put it onto a four pin connector. So two on one side and the other two on the other side. So, uh, positive and negative. Okay. And this one... For the printer board, uh, goes on to the Q2, which is the bottom left here. All right, that should be good. And those aren't touching or anything, so fantastic. Uh, what that does is it it gives you you know um, more wire for the uh, for the energy to transfer down. If we were to trim those and just use one connector on each side, then it kind of creates a bottleneck right there at the pins. And um, probably would still work, but you don't want this to get uh, hot. You don't want this wire to get hot. The reason why we're using this thicker gauge is to make sure that enough current can go through it without it overheating. Okay, so that's pretty good for that one. And um, one thing we, we can do for this is we can zip tie it here once we get this one connected. So that's it, that's the trick, those are the tricky ones. The rest are pretty much straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish them up as fast as I can here.
Okay, so I went ahead and just stripped um, some sheathing off of all the wires except for the thermistor for the hot end. Okay, just gonna go ahead and put the crimps on all of these. I'm doing the y-axis motor right now. Just finished the um, the end stop switch for the z-axis. Those probably don't actually need to be that long. Um, so that's going to be for the extruders. So that goes over here. Um, so I'm going to actually go ahead and, and cut these. I'm just going through and I'm putting uh, the crimps on everything as fast as I can so that I can go through and then put all the ends on everything. So this um, this is going to be for the hot end for the heater resistor. OK. 
Okay. This is for the thermostore for the hot for the heat bed. And so the only one I have left um, is the thermostore for the um, for the extruder. Okay, so then I can go ahead and put plugs on all of these. So let's do the y-axis. It's going to be blue, yellow, green, and red. The y-axis goes on the second plug with the blue on the left. It's going to be, this might be different for, uh, you know, uh, well, this should be different for a ramps or other circuit. Let's go ahead and do the end stop switch. This is a three connector. Put the plugs on, on the outer sides here for the z-axis end stop. Okay, the z-axis end stop goes down here. The bottom right for the end stop switches. Oh, whoops, that's the extruder. Oops, that's z. There we go. It's the second to the right one. All right, that's in place. And uh, go ahead and do the end stop switch or oh, oh the thermistor. Okay, just this. Second here, let's actually do the extruder. Extruder is going to be blue, yellow, green and red the extruder goes on the far on the far right over here with the blue on the left okay that's good so a few more left here. This one is going to be for uh, okay. Um, now this is for the uh, for the heater resistor. So for the heater resistor, I'm going to use a four-way, and I'm going to plug both of these into the center pegs. And then these go right where the other, um, right next to the heat bed, which is Q1 on this board. There we go. Okay, so we just have the fan connector and the thermostor for the extruder, or for the hot end, I mean. Let's go ahead and do, get that off there. Okay, the thermistor connects over to C12. So let's see, that's going to use a three way. Well, let me get these crimped on here first. Well, this will be the last of the crimps.
Okay, this is going to be a three-way, and I'm going to put them side by side um, on the three-way here. And this is going to plug in over to the right on the upper side of the um, C12. All right. Okay, and there's actually there's actually a spot here labeled fan, and so that's where the fan's going to go, and that's this green one here. So again, I'm going to use a three-way, and I'm just going to put it side by side. So it acts sort of like a, um, a two-way plug. And that's going to go up on the fan plug. And I'm not sure which one's positive. Let me, um, let me see if I can check real quick. Okay, positive is the pin on the bottom. So I'm going to turn that around. Perfect. All right. Okay. All right. And um, let's see, it looks like we just have one left. That's the thermistor for the heat bed. Okay, and that, that goes to C12 on the bottom. So we're gonna use a three-way again and plug these in right next to each other. to act as a two two way and for this I'm gonna kind of weave it around here and get it down figures it's uh, like the farthest I'm gonna go ahead and put it through the hole here on the uh, on the electronics mount and yeah, that's goes all the way down at the end of the C12 so that should be good okay and then last I'm gonna take a zip tie and I'm going to zip tie this connection here. Oh, looks like I accidentally destroyed this plug here. rerouting it underneath the uh, the power wire for the heat bed. This is that one I plug in. I'm just gonna... There we go. Huh. Strange. Why do I keep having that problem? Weird. What's wrong? This is strange. This keeps happening. This one just got destroyed too. There's something going on here. These look fine. Well, this might be a little too much solder on that one. That's probably why. Let me try this again. Okay, pretty sure that's what's wrong. Anyway, that should be fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie the power wire for the heat bed so that it's not getting pulled off of the electronics. Okay. That should do it. So we should have full be able to, we should have full extension on these wires in either direction. Uh, it's looking pretty good.
All right. So that essentially takes care of the electronics. Let me go ahead and um, move the camera down so you can get a closer look. So we've got everything, everything wired up here. All of the uh, the stepper motors get connected at the top here, and um, the end stop switches are mounted down below. And the power for the heat bed is on the bottom here, and then the power for the extruder is the next one, or for the uh, hot end is the next one up here. And over on this side, um, we have the connections for the fan for um, that's going to be blowing on the hot end, and then we have the connection for the um, the thermistor for the hot end and the thermistor for the heat bed. So, okay, and uh, that takes care of the electronics. So that is it for the construction of the RepRap. The physical, the physical construction of the RepRap itself is now complete. So the next step is um, mainly going to be software. So we'll go ahead and um, Actually, there is one more thing I just thought of. Um, we do need to hook up the power supply. Let me show you that real quick. Okay. This came with an adapter. Ah, found it. Um, which makes this really easy. All you do is um, plug this. Oh, this is really easy for the printer board anyway. All you do is plug it into one of the power plugs on the ATX power supply. These things never line up. And then you plug this in into the top section here and and then of course just use the uh, AC power cord um, to plug it into the wall. Okay. And now that's completed. <laughs> um, also this did come with a um, with a, um, a micro USB cable so that um, you can plug this into the computer. And of course a ramps electronics is gonna be slightly different. Essentially this plugs in down here. At the bottom. And then this plugs into your computer. Okay, so that wraps up the actual physical construction of the rep wrap. In the next step, I'm gonna show you how to install the software onto the electronics. And then from there, um, we will go into calibration and make sure that uh, the printer is printing successfully. All right, thanks for watching.